Nehemiah chapter 1. If you want, please stand if can, out of reverence to God's word. If you want, stand in. My God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 1 is reading from the New Living Translation. It says, in late autumn in the month of Kelsby, in the 20th year of King Exertius, reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. And and I, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked him about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going, how things were going in Jerusalem. Verse 3 says, they said to me, things are not going well for those who, are, those who have returned to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. Nehemiah said, when I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days, my God, I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. Then I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands. Listen to my prayer, Nehemiah said. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people, Israel. Nehemiah said, I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, decrees, and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Verse 8 says, please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return, oh my God, thank you, Lord, to me and obey my commands and live by them, lifestyle still matters, church, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. Verse 10 says, the people you rescue by your great power and strong hand are your servants. Oh Lord, Nehemiah said, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. In those days, Nehemiah said, I was the king's cupbearer. So, Father God, I thank you for the few minutes. Lord, I know I'm not going to be able to finish, but I just thank you for a mighty move. I thank you for the refreshing. I thank you for stopping by, breathing on the body of Christ as a whole this afternoon, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that we're much lighter and feeling much better than when we first walked into these doors, Father God. I thank you for strength for the journey. I thank you for each and every person, Father God, under the sound of my voice, from the oldest all the way down to the youngest. Father God, let your word, Father God, penetrate the people today. Move me out of the way so that your spirit can get in the way. Hit your target. Strengthen and save somebody's soul today if they don't know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in this place. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, vision. I'm finding out that you got a personal vision that God has placed inside of you. That when God created you, he created you with a purpose. And from your purpose, your vision, your personal vision is formulated. I need each one of you to understand that God created you with a purpose and you escaped the things that you escaped, and you was born at a time such as you have been born for a time such as this. You're not a mistake. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the mama said. I don't care. You are not a mistake. Don't you know you could have been born at any given time, and you could have been born somewhere else other than America. My God, we have an opportunity to be free. That we have an opportunity, my God, to do business in God's kingdom. It could be much different in your life right now, my God, but God has a plan for each one of you. So I want to talk to you a little bit about vision. That's the title of my sermon, just one word, vision, because you need one. Vision will sustain you. Vision will keep you. Vision will help you walk through trials and tribulation as Nehemiah experienced, my God, on to doing what God has called him to do. And I quote, my God, the great Dr. Miles Monroe in his absence as he sits in heaven and sits high and looks low right now. Vision is the source of hope, he said, in life. The greatest gift ever given to mankind isn't sight, but the gift of vision. Sight is a function, church, of the eyes, but vision is the function of the heart. Don't miss that. Oh, it's important how you see, but you can't see with your natural eyes. 
You got to visualize stuff before they ever build it, before they ever bring the dump trunk. You got to see it in the spirit. Yeah. Uh, before they ever cut down a tree, you got to see the house. Before they ever, come on somebody, before they ever pour the concrete, you got to already see it in the spirit realm. Come on somebody. Vision also makes suffering and disappointment bearable. Vision does. Vision generates hope during despair, y'all, and provides endurance in tribulation. Vision inspires the depressed and motivates the discouraged. Nehemiah knew that the task of rebuilding the walls could not wait. Despite several setbacks from enemies, of Jerusalem, Nehemiah completed the task of rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. So let's look at three principles that Nehemiah understood. Point number one, the pe people of vision encounter problems. Though you have a vision, you will encounter problems. Just read the book of Nehemiah. God stirred Nehemiah up for the work, my God. And so up on the point number one, right down, A, the calmness of Nehemiah's life. Nehemiah was sitting in the palace with the king. He was the cupbearer. The life of Nehemiah, the life that Nehemiah lived as the cupbearer was a life of peace and prosperity, y'all, and political power. I need us to understand that. His job was to taste all of the food, all of the king's food before it got to the king, to prevent the king from being poisoned. He had a, he had a tall order. He had to eat the food and taste the food and drink the wine before the king did because if someone decided to poison the king, they would poison Nehemiah first before it get to the king. So he stood in between death and life. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. So my God, my God, the king had to trust Nehemiah with his life. Who do you got in your life that you could trust like that to taste your food, to taste your wine before you do? Because somebody trying to poison you. Come on, somebody. Mm. He would have been one of the most trusted men in the kingdom. I need you to understand how important his position was in life. And up under that, right down B, because I don't want to labor. My God, the calamity. He was sitting high and he was looking low. He was with the king. And now all of a sudden, my God, things change. How many know that you could be sitting high? Everything could be going well. And then all of a sudden, that knock, that calling, come on, that purpose on which you was really created, come knocking. And verse 2 and 3 says, his peace and serenity was shattered by a visit from his own brothers. He brought news, my God, they brought news that the people of Israel were being afflicted by their enemies. Mm -hmm. And that the city of Jerusalem was completely devastated, mm, my God. And we all know that life can be perfect one minute and can fall to pieces the next. Mm -hmm. As I told y'all, my God, Nehemiah was sitting high and he was looking low. He sat with the king. That means he ate the best food, my God. He slept in the best places, my God. Oh, my God, he lived in luxury, my God. But that was, God showed me that that was his position. Why, don't miss this, but that wasn't his calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, he had a position, but that wasn't his calling. God positioned him for a season, my God, to get favor with the king because he was going to need the king later on down the road. See, sometimes God will bring people in your life, my God, and they're not going to remain, but God going to give you favor with it because you're going to need them on down the road. Yes, See, trying to say, that's why you can't mishandle people, my God. People matters, my God. Oh, my God, God came to seek and save that which is lost. God is concerned about his people. But Nehemiah was holding a position, but that wasn't his real assignment. Yeah. Oh, my God, is it possible that some of you are in a position on your job, but that's not really your assignment? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nehemiah asked a question. He said, what's going on with the people? It says, I asked him about the Jews, Nehemiah said, who, who returned from captivity and about how things were going. They said to me, things are not going well, my God, for those who returned from the province of Judah. Come time, God will allow you to hear something that will stir you up. Are you with me so far? Uh, Nehemiah was stirred up behind something. Remember, he was sitting high. I'm redundant. And he was cool. He had everything. He didn't have to be concerned about what was going on with the other people. He had made it. Come on, at this time, he had already made it, my God. He didn't need to be concerned about nobody else. He, he, he could have took the mindset that most Christians in America do. They worry about they four and no more. Come on, somebody. But he heard something. Sometimes when you hear something, see, see God allow you to hear something that will stir you. Mm. Uh, my God, God allow you to hear something that will make you stop and say, Ugh. Uh, is that not a cause? Uh, who's seeing about that person? Who's doing something about that? My God, and God allowed you to hear that because really you weren't about who doing something. God saying you supposed to be doing something. Who am I talking? Oh, I don't want to get excited. I, I don't want to get excited. So write this down as we get going. See, the compassion that Nehemiah showed for, showed for people. Do you got compassion for people? He went from being calm 
to calamity, and now he got compassion all because of what he heard. Or is it possible that God has allowed you as a people of God to hear things, and because we are so insensitive, and we are so concerned about our four no more, the things that people are going through, the things that you are hearing, the things that you are seeing don't even move you? Nehemiah heard something, my God, that stirred in him and stirred up in him to the point where he's willing, my God, to go to the king and ask for a favor. But keep in mind, while he was serving the king, he was found faithful. That's why you can't tell yourself what you do don't matter. The Bible says that God shows himself faithful to those that are faithful. Oh, my God, you got to understand you're storing up, you're storing up treasures right now when you be found faithful. My God, don't you know that God knows that you made a sacrifice to come out here on these, on these snowy streets? God sees that. Guess what? Put a, hat in your, or put a feather in your hat because God going to remember that. Yeah. All those that could have came to church and chose not to come to church, he sees that too. But Nehemiah was found faithful serving the king. It's going to come a time with some of the people that you're serving, you're going to need them. That's why you got to treat people, my God, with respect. You got to treat people with honor. Bishop always told me, my God, be careful how you treat me because when you get yours, my God, it's going to come back on you. Oh, my God, I've experienced some of it, but it's all good. It's all good. According to verse 4, when Nehemiah hears the awful news, his heart breaks. The Bible says love with God, love and hate with God, hate. Did the things of God break your heart? Are you grieved by the things that you see? Are you grieved by the things that you hear? Are you seeing, uh, do it bother you that your sisters and brothers is tapping out all around you? Uh, my God, in this church and other churches, my God, all around the country, my God, that, that concerns you, my God. Are you concerned about what God is concerned about? Or is we a people that's worried about our foe and no more? You got to ask yourself this type of question. That wasn't Nehemiah's case. Nehemiah was concerned about the news that he heard. And it broke his heart. And it caused him to go into fasting, weeping, and praying. Oh, my God. I just visualized the man of God hearing this, and he just breaks down. And he go into fasting, weeping, and praying. He didn't get on Facebook. He started praying. He didn't put it on Instagram and social media and all that stuff. He started praying, weeping, and fasting. He started praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The news that you're hearing, the things that you're seeing, church, listen to me as I pastor you. My God, what is it causing you to do? How are you reacting? Are you listening? Are you hearing? Are you just going on about your business? Or is it causing you to do something? Maybe God is trying to stir you up to your purpose. Yeah. But you, my God, disregarding what he's trying to use and who he's trying to use to stir you up for a cause. Do you not have a cause? Do you know what your vision is for your life? As I told Pastor Champ in the back, anytime you got a vision or you got a dream that you can manage, it's not from God. When God give you a vision, when God give you a dream, it's going to take him to fund it. It's going to take him to birth it. <clears throat> because, <clears throat> because God don't want you and I dependent on ourselves. Cursed is the man who trusted our leaning in the arm of flesh. So if you can manage and control your vision, your, your dream, then it's not from God. Because God going to give you a dream that you can't pay for, that you can't fulfill. It's going to take him connecting the dots and dotting the I's and crossing the T's, baby. Oh, it's going to take him paying for it. It's going to take him doing supernatural things, my God. And the reason why he does it like that, Christian, because he wants all the glory and he wants all of the honor. Because if you can manage it, if you can control it, then you're going to get the glory. Uh, you're going to become selfish and say, I did this. Uh, you're going to become like Satan and say, I can do it better than God. I did this. This is my money. I built this kingdom. Come on, Nebuchadnezzar. You're going to think it's all. You're going to make it all about you. Sometime, my God, oh, my God, God would allow you to hear things because God is trying to stir you up for your real purpose. Some of you are holding positions, but that's not your real assignment in life. Let me go a little deeper, my God. And so he entered into prayer, my God, before the Lord, instead of being happy in his position, and my God, his life is shattered. It brought him to his knees. He could have just been cool. He could have said, okay, that's it's sad to know that I'll send a prayer for you. You know how people say, I'll pray for you, and they go on about their business. You know what I'm saying? But it brought him to his knees. Have you ever heard something that brought you to your knees? Have you ever experienced something that brought you to your knees? Have you ever been in situations, my God, that brought you to And it don't have to always be catastrophe. Sometimes the goodness of the Lord, who like it has done your pastor, has brought me to my knees. <laughs> oh, my God, the favor of God has brought me. To my knees, my God. Come on, come on. When the hand of the Lord is moving in your life, it'll bring you to 
to your knee. When you think about the goodness of the Lord, you can't sit in your seat, my God. Oh, I've been up under the weather, but I'm starting to feel my help coming on, my God. Oh, my God, but when you think about the goodness of the Lord, it'll make you get up at your seat and it'll make you come to the altar, my God. Some things, when you think about the goodness of the Lord, will bring you to your knees, my God. And not only would it bring you to your knees, it'll cause you to lay out prostrate, my God, because you think about the goodness and the favor of the Lord. Do anybody know what I'm talking about? And say, have God been good to anybody in the church other than me? Do anybody got a testimony inside this church? My God. Ooh. But Nehemiah heard some news that brought him to his knees. This is how God forms vision. Vision is not always just given by way of a dream. Sometimes God will allow a catastrophe. Sometimes he will allow a situation. Come on, Dr. Martin Luther King. My God, look at his birth, what God called him to do. My God, in the midst of all the racism and hatred and hell that was going on in society. Some of us is waiting for that dream and that vision to be so wrapped up in a, in a real cute little basket. But sometimes it's not going to come like that. My God, sometimes God would allow you to, uh, God would expose on the inside of you, my God, to a catastrophe, to a situation like he did Nehemiah. Nehemiah inquired about his people. And then God started breaking him. And stirring him. You looking for somebody else to do it. But God wants you to do it. You instantly, we guilty of instantly thinking about who is, let Oliver do it. But God allowed you to hear it. Let Sharon do it. But God exposed you to it. You the solution. He exposed you to it. He's asking you to do it. He wants you to pray. He wants you to fast. You might not be the one to build it, but you're the one that's supposed to put, push it through prayer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to hold myself. Mm. As I told you, my God, in relation to keep everything in context to the scripture, my God, uh, Nehemiah's purpose, my God, is formed through a catastrophe by the things that he heard. My God, God knows how to stir up our nest when we become complacent, y'all. Nehemiah was sitting in the king's palace chilling, but God stirred him up for his real purpose. Is God trying to stir you? Are you fighting against the will of the Father? When you fight against what God is trying to do in your life, it's going to produce a major, major depression. I promise you, when you fight against God's will, can I help you this afternoon? You and I, I and you cannot win. That's why you got to have a real eternal yes down in your soul. Because God knows what's best for you and I. Trust me, the safest place is in his will. The safest place is in his will. And so if we know that the safest place is in his will, why do we always try to fight yeah. what he tries to do yeah. in our life? Yeah. You know why? Because that's a form of control. Yeah. Yeah. And you and I do more damage to ourselves when we try to control the will of the Father. When you begin to suppress, you become oppressed and you yeah. become depressed. See, you're trying, you're trying to suppress. You know what God has told you to do. God has showed you things that some of us have said, oh, my God, that's, that can't be God. And you talk yourself out of it. Well, you know what it is, God. You know it's God. But God know how to make you and I get up out there complacent spirit, that complacent mindset. It's dangerous, my God, when the spirit of God is moving and you have a complacent mindset. When you have a complacent mindset, you try to handle or move a God. You, you, you present strange fire. Oh, my God, I'm not trying to get no emotionalism. When you try to control, you become complacent, my God. You try to handle the fire of God with strange fire. See what I'm trying to say? You, you talk yourself out of what God is trying to do. My God, you start telling yourself that couldn't be God. You start doing, my God, what many of us, my God, do. We start telling ourselves, I'm not qualified. Uh, that, that he must be want to use somebody else. Yeah. He, ha, he can't use me, my God. I've been rejected all of my life. I've been molested. I've been mishandled. I've been dropped. My shiver, my fibers. He, he couldn't be, I, I, I couldn't be the one. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of that has to do with not just being complacent, but it has to do with the spirit of fear. Oh, my God, when we operate, keyword operate, uh, there's a level of fear that I have in me right now every time I stand before y'all. There's a level of fear that I got, my God, inside of me as we get ready to move and possess this new land, my God. But it's not fear that's paralyzing me. It's fear that's pushing me. I can't get nobody standing right there because I want to see God move. Oh, my God. And so, therefore, when you try to control, and my God, the will of God in your life, when you become complacent, complacent people is hard, stubborn, stiff-necked people. 
when you get complacent, my God, you come and you park. And you'll come and enjoy the service, but don't know. You'll move in the flesh, but your spirit's never moved. You'll clap and shout, but your attitude is still nasty. See what I'm trying to say? You'll do a jump and shout and run around and fall on the floor and still walk in unforgiveness. Oh, my God. God sees all that type of stuff. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. See what I'm trying to say? And God is trying to stir some of us up because we too complacent. We good at coming to church, my God. We good at even reading our, our day-to-day devotion, my God. And we say our say five-minute prayer, oh, my God. But some of y'all, God has called all of us to greatness. Oh, there's something down on the inside of you, my God, that God's trying to get out. God let you live and God brought you out because there's something in you that he's trying to expose to the world. Oh, my God, you ought to have enough love for yourself and say, God, what did you create me for? God, why did you leave me here? Why did I make it out, God? I got something great on the inside of me, God. Help me tap into that greatness that's on the inside of me. Are you desperate enough to tap into, my God? Oh, my God, that's what God has called you to do. Are you ready to birth what God has put on the inside of you? Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within, baby. Who am I talking to? You got to look within when you're trying to find vision. Vision is within. God put it in you. Oh, before he created you, baby, he already put it in you. Oh, my God, then he created you to do it. He created you with vision. He put it in you. Then he created you to go do it. He didn't create vision and say, let me go find somebody to do it. Let me go find somebody to do what I believe. God created you with your purpose. God created you with your purpose. In mind. Oh, he saw at the end, then go back and do the beginning. I can't get him. Oh, if I wasn't feeling up under the weather. Come on, somebody. He created you and gifted you with purpose. He created you already with vision and purpose. Yeah. Then he wouldn't create you say, hey, should I go fulfill it? But you got to find it. That's why he says, blessed is the man who hunger. Yeah. You got to hunger after what God has for you. You got to hunger after your purpose. You got to say, God, reveal your calling to me. Yeah. Reveal your purpose to me. Lord, show me my vision. And usually, vision is connected to purpose. Yeah. What would you go to work and do and not get paid for? Yeah, yeah. That's part of your calling and your purpose and your vision. Something that you would do even if they don't pay you for it. Even if nobody don't pat you on the back. Even if nobody don't tell you job well done, you still are doing it. Your purpose, I promise you, your vision and purpose is connected right off in there. Something that you enjoy doing. Even when, my God, you're mad and frustrated, you enjoy doing it. <laughs> or even if it's snow on the ground, you'll do everything you can to get to your job. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. How many of us, the late doctor say, go to jobs that we frustrated about? How many of us have been on job for 10, 20 years, my God, and we know that's a position, but now I just learned that it's not my assignment. Because guess what? Your vision will bring fulfillment. Anytime you're holding a position, you're not being fulfilled. Vision always brings fulfillment. If you're not being fulfilled and life seems like a dormant, my God, mat in her heart. Uh, come on, if you feel so, my God, defeated, and I, that's because you're not in vision. You're not in full purpose, my God. You're in a position, but you're not in your assignment. When you get in your assignment, life takes on a new meaning. Yeah. My God, Nehemiah had a position, my God, but that wasn't his vision. That wasn't his assignment. God put a vision in him to go back and rebuild. Come on, somebody. Yeah, with me so far. Mm, come on, somebody give God a hand for me right quick. Mm. So God began to stir the man of God up. Mm. Nehemiah asked a question in verse 2 that proved to be a pivotal moment in his life. God wanted to restore Jerusalem. But he needed a man of vision to bring it to pass. The news from Jerusalem was God's call for Nehemiah's life to become involved in what God wanted to do. I believe it's time for going on for Christ. In this season, as I taught y'all last Sunday, it's time. Now to get involved. As Bishop said, my God, this past Sunday, or it was a Sunday, he said six is the number of man. My God, God laid the foundation. We're coming up out of grace, number five. My God, God has given us grace. God has given us time to build. And now, my God, God has blessed us with a work. And now it's time for man, kind, yeah, to carry on what God has given yeah. us. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? God is looking for one man, a one person, one woe man to do what he calls to do. Come on, somebody. Is you that person? Is you that person? Are you the person, my God, of God? You can say, God, who am I? Send me. Use me. Who am I, God? I don't have to know everything, but I trust you. Uh, I might not get all the money, but I trust you. My credit may even be bad, but I'm willing to do what you need me to do, God. Uh, people may not like me and tell me I'm disqualified, but I'm willing to do what you want me to do. Is that you? If, 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 amen. Thank you. Somebody understand what I'm saying. My God. God needed a person. So guess what? God snatched a person, my God, that was sitting in a position, but that wasn't his purpose. That wasn't his calling. So he went to the king's palace, Brother Boy, to say, I need you. 
He allowed, God is so strategic, as I teach y'all, he allowed Nehemiah to inquire. God put that on him to inquire. Yeah. Nehemiah inquired about something, and God began to break his nest. God began to take him up out of what the familiar, the being comfortable, eating all the great food, drinking all the yeah. best wine. God said, okay, now I'm going to disrupt your life. What am I saying? Don't you know that God's calling would disrupt your life? The hand of the Lord would disrupt your life. That's why you got to have a real yes. The callings, students, would disrupt your life. Don't try to control what God want to do in your life. Just get a real yes. My God, if you struggle with a real yes, then God break me so I can have a real eternal yes. Because all we going to do is frustrate ourselves when we try to control God's calling yeah. on our life. Yeah. I am saying that redundant because the spirit of God got me right there. Because many people are frustrated because they're trying to control what God will do in their life. Amen. Just let go. Somebody say, let it go. Let it go. Amen. 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 And so God wanted to restore. God chose Nehemiah, my God. Just like many of us, just like many of us, my God, when the cause comes, people act different. How they respond different. Some, like Isaiah, responded eagerly to the invitation. Others, like Jonah, tried to run. Which one are you? Are you saying yes? You coming to God? Are you like Jonah? Are you running away from God? Have God called you and you trying to run? Have God beckoned you to come to the king's presence and you trying to get away from the king? Are you sitting in the back now when you used to sit on the front row? Uh, my God, are you like Isaiah? You accept the invitation. Are you like Jonah? Are you running? Uh, and you say, let me go over here and work over here when you know you're called to be over here, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got many Jonas sitting all around the nation. And Father God, I mean, out of, out of place. Come on, somebody. My God, are you running? Are you sitting somewhere doing things in the ministry that you know you're not, that you're called to do something different? Are you doing something in the ministry, but you know you're called to do something different? Are you holding down a position because you are scared and afraid of your assignment? Are you working at a job that you know, my God, you're more than qualified to be somewhere else, but you don't want the responsibility, so you just choose to dumb down yourself and accept anything? You know that the degree that you got is going to require a different level of function, a different level of thinking, so therefore I just accept this to get by. Are you in a position, but out of your assignment? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That could have been a title of the sermon. Yeah. Are you in a position, but out of your assignment? Doing something that God allowed you to do for a season, but then he said it's time to shift. See, what I like about Nehemiah, I thank God I'm going from the spirit, is that he held down a position, but when the time came, he was ready to shift. Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? You could be in a position, but when the, when the knock comes, shift. When the door opened up, walk through it. As I teach y'all, you got to have a kingdom mindset. When the door opened, like the late doctor told me, you got to walk through it and own it. My God, even if you don't feel qualified, you got to own it. Who am I talking to in the church? See what I'm trying to say? You know you're not qualified, and I know you're not qualified. I'm not qualified, but I stand up here like I own it. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. That's just a kingdom mindset right there. I like Nehemiah because Nehemiah had a kingdom mindset, my God. He was in position, my God. Oh, my God, but when the call came, my God, when God began to stir up his nest, when God said, now it's time, my God, for you to fulfill this vision, now it's time for you to go back and rebuild Jerusalem, my God. Nehemiah didn't kick. Nehemiah didn't buck. Nehemiah went to fasting and praying and mourning. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. What are you doing? Are you fighting against what God is trying to do in your life? Are you terrified of your vision? I am. But it's a healthy fear. It's not an unhealthy fear. There are certain things that God has called you to do that should generate some fear. Because if you don't have no fear about the things that God has showed you, that's flesh. You should have some level of fear. Oh, my God. Don't be like Jonah, don't run. Don't be like Moses. Mm. Moses saw the vision, but he tried to take matters in his own hand. Come on and do the job his way. Are you trying to do it your way? Are you trying to control the will of God? This is good, sound teaching. Are you trying to control God's will in your life? And it's producing mega, mega frustration in your life right now. And we're blaming everybody else for our frustration when the true problem is you. If Nehemiah, when he heard that news, would have went back to business as usual, I promise you what used to work would have stopped working. The favor that he had with the king would have begun to diminish. You know why? Because now he's in disobedience. 
See, he was in order when he was serving the king. See what I say? But if he'd have stayed, my God, after God said it's time to shift and he would have tried to stay, now he's in disobedience. See what I'm trying to say? So now that favor, Minister Albert, that he had with the king, all of a sudden now it didn't dry it up. It's something drying up in your life and God trying to get you to... Well, used to, well, your hand used to fit in the glove. Now it don't fit no more. <laughs> well, it used to come easy. It's not easy no more. <laughs> what you used to like to do, you don't like to do it. You know why? Because God is trying to increase you. God is trying to expand you. God is trying to enlarge you. My God, so that worked for me. A season now it don't work no more. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Are you with me so far? But don't try to control. Isaiah, out of those two, was the only one that had a real yes down in his soul. Jonah ran, and God had to send a whale, come on, to get his attention. Don't make life difficult. The safest places in this world. Don't make, make life hard. Life is already hard. Yeah. Don't do like Juna, Juna, uh, Jonah and waste time. Where you gonna run to? Ask yourself, where you running to? Where you gonna go, Barry? Where you gonna go, Mr. Thomas? Where you, where you gonna go? Where you gonna go, Christian? Where can we go? That God is not already there. What can you hide? If you're in a cave, in a cave. If you're in a crack house, he'll come get you at the crack house. If you're in a penitentiary, he'll come get you at... If you're in a crack house, he'll come get you at the crack house. If you're in a penitentiary, he'll come get you at the penitentiary. Where are you going to go? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where are you going to go? If you're in a casino, he'll come to the casino. If you're in the whole house, he's going to come to the whole house. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? If you're in the federal penitentiary, B.C., where you going to go? Yeah. If you're in another man's bed, where you going to go? Yeah. If you're in another woman's bed, where you going to go? Yeah. If you're at the treehouse, where you going to go? Yeah. If you go to Las Vegas, where they go 24-7, where you going to go? Yeah. If you go to New York City, my God, where you going to go? I'm serious, y'all. I'm trying to make it as practical because everybody is running in some form or way you're running. Yeah. And you might not be physically running, but you're running right here. And it's producing frustration. But Nehemiah had an eternal yes. When God called him, he was ready. Don't you know what I love about the story? Is that even though he was sitting high, he was sitting with the king. This, can you imagine in the Bible days? Let me go over to my students. He had an audience every day. Y'all heard me, man. For those that's the Dr. Miles, y'all understand kingdom. He had an audience every day with the king. Him and the king was right here. He had the king's ear, he had the king's heart, he had the king's wisdom. He had an audience every single day with the highest person in the kingdom. But when the call came, he was willing to leave all of that to go with God. Are you so attached to your position that when the call comes, you don't want to let go? My God, y'all need to stay with me, church. My God, are you so attached, Brian, to that when God calls, say, come do what I told you to do? Will you let go? Yeah. Would you back up when God said, come on, leave the six figures, <laughs> leave the company car, leave the 15 room, yeah. my God, a, 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 a sky rise a, a apartment, come on down here and serve, my God, some of these homeless people. I got a plan for you. When you come, when he call. Nehemiah left it all, my God, to go with God. Nehemiah said, I'm not attached to nothing. Oh, my God, Nehemiah didn't have no unhealthy attachments to the king, even though he honored the king, even though he, was, he showed the king. But when God came, he chose God over confidence. I can't get nobody to say nothing. He chose God over comfortableness, my God. Will you choose God over a convenient life? Are you willing to trust God, my God? Well, you don't understand what God is trying to do in your life. Mm. Oh, I ain't get too many amens, my God. Oh, y'all better be glad I've been fighting my boy. Oh, my God. Hey, well, are you willing to stay stuck? Are you willing to trust God? Nehemiah said, my God, I, 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 I got all this audience with the king. I get to ride side by side with him. Oh, I get to taste his food and drink all the best wine. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, but that don't matter. God's calling means more than anything that I could be doing. Is that your mindset this afternoon? Do you want God more than you want anything else? 
Oh, we sung it this past Wednesday at Bible study, falling in love with Jesus. Oh, you know you're growing and developing when you start falling in love with the things of God. When you want to wake up in the morning, you can think about getting to your one year reading. Oh, when you find yourself on your knees fasting and praying, my God. Oh, my God, when you always want to get to a book and read a book and flip the pages and go in the door. Oh, my God, when you start applying and implementing the things that you're learning in your life, you know you're growing and you're developing, my God. Oh, my God, are you falling in love with the things of God for your life? Do you are you hungry enough for God's purpose to be revealed in your life? See, God has to reveal different things in stages. If God began to show me, my God, what I was called to do, I don't think I would have done it. See, sometimes God got to walk you into your calling. God got to walk you into your purpose, my God. Oh, he got to get you ready. That's why the Bible says don't despise small beginnings, my God. God, just keep on walking with God. Just keep on trusting in God. When you stumble, get back up and keep on going, my God. Keep on walking in love. Keep on walking and forgetting. Keep showing up when everybody else don't show up. Don't get caught slipping, my God. Don't get adjust and adapt in life, my God. Thinking how strange your trials or tribulations come. Thinking how strange the stuff begin to happen in your life. That's the enemy trying to discourage you. That's when the enemy trying to get you to tap out. But just keep showing up. Just keep on walking. Just keep on shoveling sheep down like David did. Come on, just keep being found faithful on the backside of the mountain. When it's time, when it's time, somebody say when it's time, God go say sin for him. Oh my God. Come on, Joseph. Joseph. Joseph was in the penitentiary. Sin for him, my God. Now it's time for Joseph to come out the pen, my God, to sit with the king. Come on, somebody. When it's time, God gonna call you from the back. I would say, come forth and sit with the king, my God. Who am I talking to in the church? Are you faithful? Mm. Oh, my God, my God. Oh, my God, my voice. God, but give it to me, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just be found faithful. Don't be attached to nothing when God come knocking. Walk away from it all. <laughs> be willing to leave it all, my God, to go with God. I promise you, you want your win in the end. Oh, that's why he said, those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Endure your trials, endure your tribulations. Let them lie on you. Let them talk about you, my God. Pay the price, my God. In the wind, you're going, in the end, you're going to win. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Mm. Mm. Let me get this on out the way so I can get y'all out of here, my God. But I don't want us to be like Moses. Uh, quit trying to do everything your way. Oh, my God. That cut me right there. Uh, there's certain things you can do your way, but there's other things you got to do it God's way. What am I trying to say right there? That's why you got to get a pulse. Not just for the spiritual side, but even the natural side. See what I'm trying to say? You got to have a pulse. There are certain things that God has instructed us to do in his constitution where it don't take fashion and praying, it just take obedience. I set before you life and death, blessing the curses, choose life. Yeah. One of those things that he told us to do, my God, is that he is somewhat hard when you do it in the flesh. He said, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. See what I'm trying to say? And then he tells the wives, he says, he never told them to love them. He said, wives, respect. Because when a man feels respected, it's easy for him to show love. And when a wife feels love, it's easy for her to give respect. See what I'm trying to say? There's a balance to this thing, too. See what I'm trying to say? And my God, so some things God will put you, you will find to put your hands and do, and as God will want you, there's other things you got to get your hands about the way and let God do it. Yeah. See, you got to know when to press and when to back up. Yeah. When to press, thank you, Sarah, and when to back up. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? We can't control the will of God in a person's life. You can't control the timing of God in a person's life. That's when you got to be able to trust God. That's why I tell you, it takes faith and patience toward you to do the will of the Father. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? As long as you keep praying and get out of God's way, let God work on him. Let God work on her. Let God work on your children. Just walk in agape love. Just walk in agape love. Why did I say that? Because when you and I as human beings, as mothers and fathers and grandparents and so forth, we would try to put our hand in something that God is doing. Because we want it fixed right now. We need God to change this now. I'm tired of it now. If you don't fix it now, I'm done. That's the flesh. And then when that happens, we do like Moses, right? and we try to control. We try to get in the way. God says, smite. He hit pow, the rock that cost him. He died seeing freedom, but he died in looking. He died looking into freedom. That's heavy right there, man. Oh, my God. I got a phone call. Do you understand what the Spirit of God just said? Yeah. Do you understand that you can die looking, looking into freedom? My God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Ooh, 
Shike da 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 I see it, but I die before I possess it. Part of going all the way into freedom is you got to move in your purpose. You got to move in that vision that God has called you to. God will allow you to see freedom, but your purpose is going to take you into freedom. Come on, Joshua. They possess us, my God. Joshua didn't spy out the land. They crossed over and went and got fruit from the freedom and came back, my God. But to go back over into freedom, my God, he had to be in God's will. Boy, that's heavy. It's heavy. I know it is, son. Are you looking at freedom, but you never possess it? Because you let fear, rebellion, disobedience, habitual sin, another man's voice speak louder than God's oh voice, God. another woman's voice yeah. speak louder, yeah. Yeah. your mama's voice, your daddy's voice, your yeah. boss's voice. My God calls you to look at something that you possess. Purpose will take you all the way in to freedom. Mm -hmm. Purpose, vision, vision, vision. Do you see it? Do you see your life better as I bring it in? Do you see your conditions changed? Do you see your marriage better? Don't you know God is kind of a tool. He'll tell you to sow a seed when you ain't got no money to sow. I told y'all last week that I'm going to be the first one to sow until the new building fund. This is $1,000 right here that I'm getting ready to sow. It's my first fruit. Because I see what God is doing. You don't get something dropped on you like this, like we did, and God not have a plan. So I got to put faith with finances. Some of you want God to do great things, but you're too stingy. You want God to birth a whole lot of stuff that you want, but you ain't saying, God, what do you want? We come with a mindset to give God what we want to give him, but not what he asked for. Mm. See how I'm saying we try to control everything? Mm -hmm. See what I'm trying to say? Nehemiah didn't do that. Nehemiah, when the call came, when he heard what he heard, he immediately acted. He immediately, immediately responded. And from there, he started to work. I'm freelancing because I don't want to go into my notes no more. See what I'm trying to say? I'm going to close the book. But I want us to stop and think as I get ready to give y'all a few things. Listen to this right here. Vision is about God. Your purpose exists before you did. I'm watch, write that down. Your purpose existed before you did. That's why it's so important that you find out what your purpose is. Because God created you for that. He created your purpose and then he went and created you to fulfill your purpose. Are y'all with me so far? Your purpose existed before you did. To find, my God, to find your visions, you have to find your vision, you have to look within yourself where God placed it. God placed your vision within. Why are you looking at everybody else for your vision? Yeah. Yeah. Right. According to Ecclesiastes 3, it said, He also set eternity in the hearts of man. Yeah. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within. Dr. Miles taught us that true leadership is self-discovery. When you discover you, you discover the leader within you. Leadership is inside of you. We created in God's image and created in God's likeness, my God. And so therefore, if we created in God's image and God's likeness, I mean we have leadership capabilities. Or well, we have everything we do, my God, to maximize and fulfill that, that calling and that purpose and that vision that God has put on the inside of you. And so when you discover you, you discover the leader within you. All of you is gifted with leadership, but you got to tap within. You got to go within. That's why Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within Within, quit looking external and look internal. As I taught y'all, if you don't like what's manifesting external, you got to look at what's going on internal. Amen. The kingdom, the vision. Somebody lay your hands on your stomach and say, God, show me my vision. Because you need it. You need it. To stay with the context of the scripture, Nehemiah was able to deal with his Sambalas and Tobias, Pastor Tedrick, because he had an internal vision. When you have internal vision, and when your vision begin to manifest, it will cause you, my God, to soar over trials and tribulation. When everybody else, my God, quit, you'll keep going. The late doctor said, while you sleeping, I'm up working. Mm -hmm. While you are partying, I'm up studying. I'm building my vision, my God, while you playing and wasting time. Oh, I can't get nobody to say that right there. Oh, my God, see, it's a mindset, church. Vision's within. Mm. Vision will persist against all odds. Vision will persist 
against all odds. True vision is when you persevere in your dreams, regardless of the great obstacles that you face. Nehemiah faced a whole lot of obstacles. He had to deal with a whole lot of rubble. He had to deal with a whole lot of broken stuff around him. My God, oh my God, do you got a lot of le stuff left on the tendon that's broken? You got a lot of broken stuff around you? My God, that God is telling you to attend to and clean up and organize. Because you know when you organize your life, the more order, my God, your life is, the more you attract the blessings of the Lord in your life. Uh, don't have a good church life and a raggedy home life. Don't have a good church life and raggedy finances. Don't have a good church life, my God. And people love you and celebrate you, but you ain't got no respect in society. Yeah, it's good teaching. See what I'm trying to say? Well, order is that, the blessing of the Lord is there. The favor of God is there. My God, pull up into, your wife got to park outside, man, because your garage is out of order? That's out of order. Thank you for that, man of God. If, 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 if y'all got two cars and you can't get in because you got a bunch of junk because you won't take time to clean it up because you're too busy doing stuff you shouldn't be doing instead of doing stuff you called to do, you out of order. Thank you for being honest, man of God. See what I'm trying to say? All this stuff matters. Vision brings order. Vision solidifies your purpose in life. Vision solidifies your direction in life. Vision will cause you to soar when trials and tribulations come knocking. Oh, vision, my God, will rise up on the inside of you, my God, when you feel like quitting, my God. Oh, your flesh won't quit, but your spirit will keep pushing, my God, because you see it, my God. But then nobody else don't see it. You see it, my God. Oh, my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Vision. Vision. Oh, my God, vision is the only thing, my God, that will, that will bring you to fulfillment. Vision. Are you fulfilled this afternoon? Are you fulfilled? Do life has meaning? Does relationships has meaning? When you go to your job in the morning, the Lord, the Lord is coming, is it bringing you any type of fulfillment? Because truth be told, your occupation in the natural, amen, God, should bring you some level of fulfillment. Yeah. Thank you, T, because you got vision. Yeah. See, she's honest. She's sugar like, nope, yeah. and that's okay. Because, see, as long as she knows that I'm not fulfilled, that means God's getting ready to do something in her life. Yeah. Yeah. See, some of us, my God, we, we fulfill because we get a paycheck. Yeah. We got a position, but we don't have an assignment. Yeah. Yeah. Your position is not your assignment. Yeah. I want every one of you, my God, in this next season to seek God for your assignment, not a position. Yeah. Some of you are Greek because you're hiding. Some of you are Porter because you're lazy. And you know you're called to do greater things. I'm not putting you down. I'm calling you forth. Yeah. I'm putting the demand on your purpose. I'm putting the demand on your gift. Oh, my God, I'm putting the demand on your vision, my God. And some of you are going to stumble up in this season of 2019 on that what God has called you to be. It's called stumbling up on a blessing, stumbling up on your purpose, stumbling up, my God. Oh, my God, on your vision, my God. Sometimes God got to put you in uncomfortable situations, my God, for you to discover what's on the inside of you. Yeah, yeah. God got to place you in places, my God, that feel very uncomfortable, unfamiliar, my God, for you to discover what you are called to do. God walks on that. Give you this. True success is not what you accomplish. It is what you're doing with what God told you to do. Yeah. True success is not what you have accomplished in the flesh, but are you doing what God called you to do? That's true success. Yeah. Nehemiah was doing what he needed to do but then God called him to do something different and was willing to back up yeah. and do what God called him to do. True success is being in the will of the Father. Yeah. True success is doing what God has gifted you to do, Minister Oliver. Usually, God, true success for us don't look nothing like what we think in our natural mind. Yeah. Some of the things that God has asked you to do, <laughs> some of y'all, God has already asked you to do some things, even in the ministry, you're like, man, I never thought that I'd be doing that right there. He mean to tell me that I'm able to deal with them people? Yeah, yeah. That I got the patience to do that? Because sometimes God would have you in a position molding you and shaping you for where you're going. Yeah. Because God will, do, God will reveal a greater part of your purpose and a greater part of your potential in stages. I'm coming in. Yeah. God will reveal it in stages, Christian, in stages, in stages. God can't give it to you all at one time. Yeah. God can't show you to, to you all at one time. He got to give it to you in stages. Vision will keep you. Vision will help you soar. It's got one more. Going against your purpose may be a personal issue, but it's never a private one. 
you can mess up other, others' lives if you aren't, oh my God, if you aren't, my God, supposed to be where you are. The doctor was heavy. You can mess up other people's lives if you aren't, aren't where you're supposed to be. If you are supposed to be doing, be somewhere else and you refuse to go, you can mess up somebody's life. Let me close. Because if I'm supposed to be walking, as long as I'm in God's will, come on, Dominique, God will begin to send people to connect. Come on, Christian. If I let fear and I let discouragement and I let frustration and I let control, I let sin interfere. And I find myself not in God's rhythm, not in God's timing. See, there's a certain time and a place, Ecclesiastic says, for everything. And so, therefore, there's a certain time you're supposed to be at a certain place because God going to bring certain resources, certain finances, certain people into your life, my God, to reveal a greater purpose in your life. He will bring you to a certain place at a certain time to bring people that's got resources to help you do what God called you to do. Come on, Minister George. So when you and I, again, let things interfere with the assignment. We hold on to the familiar. We try to control God's will. We got a vision of what we want our life, key word, our life to look like. Uh, we said, yeah, I want to be here and I want to be working there uh, by the time I graduate. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to school now to some of my people that's in school, my God, because I want to work here and I need to be making this type of money, my God. So I'm going to forsake all else, my God, because I know what I want, my God, and what I'm supposed to be, my God, because I'm doing my will and not God's will. So therefore, no matter what pastor say, no matter what God say, my God, I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah. I'm out of the rhythm yeah. with God's timing. Remember, when you walk in with God, he will connect people at the right time. Come on, Kenny. In your life. Who in my life got to suffer because I'm out of rhythm? I'm out of timing. Even though I'm in church, even though I read my Bible, but I'm doing what I want. When I want, how I want. I'm being redundant because this is the body of Christ everywhere. People are trying to control. Can't nobody tell me nothing. I'm grown. I can do what I want to do. She a, uh, she a woman just like me, like I am. Now, he's a man just like me. So what? He's the pastor. So what? She, she's a pastor now. So what? She's over greeter. If I don't want to greet, I ain't got to greet. I ain't got to tell her I'm not coming to church. I ain't got to tell her if I'm not going to be there. Look at the mindset. Come on, Mr. Tedgy, out of rhythm, out of time. Out of season. Flesh will cause you to get out of season. Flesh will cause you to get out of the rhythm. Flesh will make you hold on to unhealthy attachments. Flesh will make you hold on to a position that God's trying to break your nest and cause you to shift and get out of because he's trying to take you farther in the purpose, farther in the vision. Remember, God reveals your purpose in stages. God reveals your vision, woman of God, in stages, my God. Your time is up, said the Lord over there, my God. God is breaking your nest and bringing you to a new work. Time. When you trust him, Will you trust him? When you're following God, you got to let go of some friends. You got to let go of some people. Because friends and people will weigh you down. Mm. Are you with me so far? See what I'm trying to say? There's a time. When the time came, Nehemiah let it go. When the time came, Nehemiah got in God's will. When the time came, Nehemiah was concerned about what God was concerned about. When the time came, Nehemiah had a yes. Nehemiah prayed, fasted, my God, and mourned for days at a time. And when God showed him the vision of what he wanted to do, Nehemiah instantly got up and started executing and doing what God told him to do. Are uh, you praying and asking God to show you? And when he show you, you talk yourself out of it. Oh, uh, my God, you praying and asking God to do more in your life, my God. And he's trying to do that, but you're rejecting, my God, everything that he's trying to do in your life. You're out of rhythm. You're out of time. And there's a place and a time for everything under the sun. Come on, Kenny. I mean, Brian. Mm -hmm. See what I'm trying to say? It's so critical. 
that you and I as a people of God be in God's time. It's so critical. Somebody's waiting on you. So if you let the spirit of discouragement cause you not to do what God told you to do, my God, you're in the wrong place in people's lives. It's suffering because you're out of place. I wonder how many people are still stuck in Egypt. Because truth be told, we as a people ain't fully in Canaan. Who's waiting on you to lead the familiar? Who's waiting on you for your vision to come forth? What is God trying to use and who is God trying to use? Come on, Oliver and Trey, and I'm about finished. I wonder how many people is waiting. You want God's perfect will, not your gifts. Gifts will make room for you, but God's will is going to bless your life. Yes, gifts will set you before kings, but God's will is going to take you on in. Come on, somebody. See, God is always building his kingdom. And God will bring people who don't look like you, who don't come from the background that I come from. He will connect you with gifted people who know more than what you know. Come on, Henry. I'm almost through. He will bring people, my God, who, 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 who come from the other side of the country and connect you with Nehemiah was willing to be in his will at the right time. Nehemiah didn't let a negative attitude, he didn't let fear stop him from doing what God has called him to do. This is helping somebody. What vision have God showed you and you sit down on it? What purpose is God trying to reveal to you but you're holding on to the familiar and you can't take off? What has God asked you to do that you know you should be doing that you're not doing? And you're frustrated. And so don't nothing satisfy you. Don't nothing fulfill you now. Everything that you're working on don't work. Because you're out of God's will and out of God's time. Come on, Barry. Everybody can't go. Everybody ain't called to go with you. You got to be rid of the clip. You got to be willing to let go of certain people in certain seasons and certain time in your life because they will cause your flight not to soul. Don't get stuck with the familiar. God has a time. God know how to put a puzzle together. And the Holy Spirit will set you free so you can have somebody else get free. Come on, Ronnie. So God said, you got to get free of alcoholism because I got a man that's been struggling for 30 years of alcoholism. Now he's free. Get on in line. This is all part of the sermon. See, God is building a remnant of people they don't come from nothing that you come from. Because he had to go to a penitentiary. First, he had to get me out of a crack house and go into the penitentiary to get me one man today because I had a purpose. My God, he created my purpose and then he created me for my purpose. Even though I was buried up under a lot of wrong decisions. Even though my purpose and my vision was buried up under a lot of unhealthy choices and decisions, my God. But my God, I still had the purpose because he created the purpose before he created me. Why are you disqualifying yourself? Life is not over. Life has just begun for you, woman of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're not a mistake. God loves you. God died for you. Now I'm going to do this last thing. I need some of my daughters that said cover to me to get in line. I'm not going to call your name, but if you ain't comfortable with this line, get in line. This is how God put a church together from all walks and backgrounds, from different places. God does things that's contrary to your mind. God 
God, there are things, my God, that you might not understand. <laughs> he connects you with people, my God, that you might not like, my God, but they got a key to unlock something on the inside of you. <laughs> oh, God, know how to, he's a master planner. The Bible says that God is a master builder, my God. God is building, God is building, God is building, God is building. God is building the women of people, my God. Oh, this is how he put the train together. Oh, he put it together just like this, my God. God is an awesome God. Oh, my God, it's purpose, it's purpose, it's purpose, it's purpose. It's all about God's purpose, it's all about God's purpose. It's all about God's purpose. Do you want God's purpose for your life? Do you want what God has for you in your life, my God? Oh, my God, are you desperate enough to let go? Are you desperate enough to submit and surrender? Are you desperate enough to say, God, who am I? Use me, send me in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. And then as you look as I see, stop by her, Toya. The person that's in the back connects with the person that's in the front. <laughs> oh, that's how God works, baby. He puts it all together. He puts it together the way he wanted to put it together. It's not my will, but it's not will be done. Just because you're starting in the back don't mean you're going to be last. He said, those that last shall be first in the end. You got to understand that God's will will never let you down. That God has a strategic purpose and a time for each and every one of you. Keep on pushing. Don't quit. Keep on seeking God. Don't quit. Keep on hanging in there. Don't quit. God has a plan and a purpose. God has a vision. God has a purpose. And God has a vision. Three months from now, this connection will be much larger. It'll be much different. Some may still be connected, and some may not be. Only God knows. But you have a purpose, y'all, and you have a vision. Are you willing to leave that which you know to do what God has called you to do? Are you willing to leave the familiar so you can leave your mark? Why all of you standing there? I thank God for the late Dr. Miles Monroe. And what I love about his story, as I read my books, and every one of them has Philippians 1 and 6, he who begun a good work. This is when I was just, Lord's people was going to church. And he would always sign Philippians 1 and 6. He who begun a good work in you was able to complete it to the day of Jesus Christ's return. Not knowing that the late doctor was prophesying what I'm standing in right now. He saw it and I didn't. That's just like vision. You got to see it before they build it. You got to see your house in the spirit before they actually pour the concrete in it. See, vision is a heart. Vision ain't about sight. You got to visualize. In the story, as I close, I'm paraphrasing, but Walt Disney was sitting, the walk, and the groundskeeper came and spoke to him and asked him, what are you doing? He was in the third heavens. He was in vision. Walt Disney. So he died. And one of the young men said, it's sad that Mr. Walt never got to see the mountain built. When his wife got up and gave her remarks, he said, I have to stand and correct the young man. She said, Walt seen him before any of us seen him. seen it. We just not seeing something that he already saw because he saw it in the spirit. You got to see things in the spirit. That's why if you try to follow God in the flesh, it's going to frustrate you. If you try to follow God and all of what God is doing in your life, by the flesh, it's going to frustrate you, church. Everyone stand. I know I went over and I usually don't go this long, but I wanted to lay this out there because it's going to take vision. Personally, and vision for the church for this next season.
vision. William, you got to see it before they pour the concrete. You got to see it before you get your degree. Some of you single women that want you a real boys, you got to stay in position for when he come. You ain't got a whole lot of contamination. You got a whole lot of pain. You ain't got a whole lot of stuff that's interfering from your boy ass loving you because you got so much on you. See it. See yourself with a healthy marriage. See yourself, oh my God, with something greater. As I told y'all, dream. Dream. For the last week, Barry, I haven't talked to you in almost two weeks pretty much. But God has been showing me you and the vision that you had. Regardless of who afford who ain't, but you had a vision. And I'm driving down the Broken Arrow. And all of a sudden I see a big old sign saying the tree house. Yeah. And I started laughing. Yeah. Because we talked about it before it ever manifested. You vowed that you would be one of the largest and the most giftedest. And God has moved quick. One thing I can say, son, is that you're a young man of vision. The things that God has done quickly. How he has increased from you sleeping on your mama's couch. How he has done it quickly in your life. Just remember this. He is your source. Can you see it? You have to see it, baby Cole. You have to see it, Moose Stop, Sarah. Brother Boyd, you saw the transitional house. Now it's manifesting. You saw the, vi the business. Why? Tedrick, you saw the real estate business. What is God trying to show you, Kenny? No more wasting time doing things and not doing purpose. Purpose brings fulfillment. This is what we needed. You saw yourself sitting on the 15th floor on your new building, with your new job, overlooking what you see. You got to see Everything better. You gotta see it. You gotta see it, not her. In the spirit. You can't serve God in the flesh. You gotta serve him by the spirit. Touch and agree with your neighbor. Brother Henry, you gotta tap into that what's on the inside. Cutting her is just passing you through, which is okay. You're called to the ministry. Any fear, any control, today we have to surrender it. You didn't go to Ramah to cut her. You went to Ramah to build God's kingdom. Hold a position like Nehemiah did and wait for the calling. And if you already know, execute like Isaiah. Don't be like Joshua. I mean Jonah. I'm speaking. Be called. You called. You look real nice, but they only knew your story. 
you call. Javet, greater purpose. They don't escape and make it out like you and I did just to live a normal life. What is normal? God never called your disciples to a normal life. When you walk with God, it would disrupt everything about your life. If it's one person in here, which is I don't believe it is, but I don't want to. If you don't know Christ, let your neighbor hand go and raise it if you want to give your life to Christ. Anybody that don't know Jesus has never ever accepted Jesus and made him Lord, capital L-O-R-D, of your life. Today is the day. If it's anybody that say, you know what? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me make this declaration. In order for God to reveal your vision for your life that he has given you, you got to be properly connected to him. You can't be on the outer court and thank God going to reveal your vision. You got to be connected to the vine in order for God to reveal your purpose and your vision. So if there's anybody under the sound of my voice that know that you are not properly connected to Christ, that somehow, some kind of way, you have allowed yourself to move from covenant to contract and have disconnected in any kind of way, and you want to make sure that if the time came that you're ready to stand before God or you understand that I got to know what my purpose and vision is so life can have more meaning and I got to be connected to Christ. If that's you, let your neighbor hand go and raise your hand. Amen. Who else in her that feel like they need to be reconnected to Christ because you're not connected even though you once walked with him? Is that you? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody that's standing in the line? Is that you? Some kind of way you feel unfulfilled and disconnected. If that's you, just let your neighbor's hand go. Don't be afraid. You'll have those times in life. So I thank you for those two. And we're going to pray. Got one more? Amen, Brother Henry. Amen. Amen. Who else? Who else know that it's, I'm missing something? I feel so unfulfilled. Don't be afraid. That's, amen. 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 I, 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 I'm living. I'm, where I'm not living. I'm just existing. If that, I need some help. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Uh, I know I could do better. Uh, I got a job, but I'm unfulfilled. Uh, just, I'm just not happy. I'm not happy in no area of my life. If that's you, just come on, raise your hand. Because I know God is speaking, man. Thank you. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really, 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 really struggling. It's really struggling. Really struggling. I'm going to ask every one of you that raise your hand and just come stand right here. Just break loose and come stand right here. If any one of my young students believe in God for financial freedom, come stand right here. Because, see, one thing that I know that getting an education, it can bring a lot of distractions as well as blessings because it takes money to live. And sometimes we can be so consumed with trying to get money to survive where we're going through the motions of religion, not relationship. We start out in relationship, but relationship, y'all listen to me, can easily move quickly to religion. Because now I got to get on the hustle and bustle because I need money. I'm tired of eating woman noodles. I'm tired of begging. And so then we start promoting and pimping our gifts. Ushakadabashunda. Freedom is coming today. Freedom is coming today. Freedom is coming to the people of God all over today. Come on up, Christian. Come on up, men of God. Shiradabashakadabashunda. Y'all keep on touching. Y'all keep on touching. Keep on touching. We can wash our hands. If you go on the glory, it's all good. My God. I speak blessings, Katrina, over your life. I speak blessings upon you and your husband and them babies. I speak blessings. Continual blessings. 
Bless the man of God. Bless the man of God. Bless the man of God. As soon to be husband and wife, if the Lord delays coming. Come touch and agree. The late doctor says that when a husband and wife come together, they are fused together. And when you try to break it, when you divorce or you separate, it rips one another in half. I speak long life to your marriage to be. Christian, I'm going to ask you to pray over the body. Pray over the body, son. First, pray for those that's come to the altar for recommitment. And then bless the people as you did last time. My God. Father, we glorify you and we honor you as the sovereign ruler of all things. For you are the great orchestrator from beginning to end. And we thank you for it, Lord. We in this room, we honor you for your sovereignty. And we don't take you for granted. We don't take what you're doing for granted. We don't take what you've already done for granted. Lord, we honor you in this space. And we honor you with our lives, Father. We lift ourselves up to you. And we present our fullness, our full and complete bodies over to you, Lord. Everything attached to us, our appendages, our money, our finances, our children, our relationships, our businesses, our, empl our employment. Father, we lift it all over to you. Our education, Father, everything, everything that we've taken for granted, everything that we've claimed as our own, Father, we give it back to the soul the true source and we say father align us align us in whatever you want us to do we give our purpose over to you we give our vision over to you father cleanse our eyes remove the scales from our eyes so that we can see clearly both in the natural and in the spiritual father whatever you're getting ready to release to us father we receive it we give you a new yes a yes that is eternal a yes that is unshaken a yes that is stubborn a yes that is obedient a yes that is tried and true and trust it father we will not move from you we will not turn from you but this yes is forever this yes is forever this yes is for always as long as you are that's as long as our yes will be so father we give ourselves over to you every single person over here that who has come who has give, who has come and who has left you father and they return back to you father we return to you in true heart we return to you in true spirit we're sorry for first forsaking you we repent of every error we repent of every wrong we repent of every impure thought we repent of all the yokes and the chains and the bondages we repent of the idols that we've lifted before you father we repent and we turn and we acknowledge you as the true and the living God, the only God of salvation, the only God of redemption, the only God of, of resurrection. Father, we turn and we lift ourselves back over to you. You have the first place. You have the first seat. You have preeminence, Father. We will never turn from you again. We will never turn for relationship. We will never turn for encounter. We will never turn for resources. For you are the source, Father. You have our hearts and you have our minds and you have our beings. Our souls belong to you. You purchased us and we return back to you, Jesus. We return back to you, Jesus, never to leave again never to leave again never to leave again it'll never be the same it'll never be the same it'll never be the same every addiction we lay it down every curse we lay it down every word curse we lay it down the very bondages of hell we sign ourselves over to Jesus we sign ourselves over to Jesus and we submit to the purchase of the blood we submit to your purchase of us we submit to our purchase of us in the areas that we have held back father we repent and we give it wholly and completely over to you. Father, I bless this body of believers. 
I bless this body of believers that our faith will rise like never before. Our faith will increase like never before. We will see a thing before we see it and we'll declare it out of our mouths in faith for the glory of the kingdom of heaven. Father, we thank you for helping us to be agents, agents of the glory in the earth realm, that when people see us, they encounter Christ. When people encounter us, they encounter you, Father, that we would be your very mirror images in the earth realm, that we would never forsake our assignments, that we would be eager and eager to move and eager to listen and eager to be obedient. Father, send us and we'll go. Send us and we'll go. We'll go into the prisons. We'll go into the crack houses. We'll go into the whorehouses. We'll go to every kirk and every cranny and every street and we'll declare the supremacy of Christ. We won't forsake you. Everywhere we go, you go. Everywhere we go, you go. We will not leave without you. Lead us, Father. Lead us into your promises. Lead us into greater fulfillment. Lead us into great territory. Lead us into greater, into greater possession. You have called us to acquisition, and it is so. So we acquire the land. We acquire the territory. We acquire the souls. We acquire the people for the glory of the kingdom. For the glory of the kingdom. And we believe it to be so. 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 We never turn from you ever again, Father. Ever. Nobody else gets the glory but you, Father. And we pray all these things in your Son's most holy and precious name. And it is so. And the body said, Amen. And amen.